All right, Belle, thanks. Well, it's already time to get ready for the school year. In fact, some students, they head back to class Monday already and transitioning their sleep schedule. It's not really an easy task at all, which is why the CDC recommends that middle and high schools start at 830 or later to help teens get the sleep they need. But according to the U.S. Department of Education, at least 42% of schools, they start before that time. So what can we do to make sure our teens are getting enough should I? We have Dr. Andrew Steam. He's a sleep specialist at Alina Health here to give us some helpful tips. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So sleep it is a struggle. It's not even a struggle for teens. I feel like it's a struggle for even adults and the young young kids. What is your advice? How many hours should we be getting, especially for teenagers? So the typical teenager needs between eight and 10 hours of sleep. Wow. Now, the problem is almost every viewer right there heard they need at least eight hours of sleep. Right. But the problem is some of our teenagers even need up to 10 to feel rested. And uh, how do teens' bodies clock vary from, say, their parents? It's very different. Uh, absolutely. Teenagers kind of by their nature are night owls. Starting in mid-adolescence and kind of lasting into your mid-20s, there's a tendency for people, those people, to want to go to bed much later than you and I do. So what are some things, I know teens, they have video games, they've got the screen time, everyone's glued to their cell phones. How can you have your teen, you know, get to bed at an appropriate time so they're getting that adequate amount of sleep that they need? That's, I think our greatest problem as Americans is discipline. Uh, we undervalue sleep. If, if I even think about my life, reading that book for a half hour is probably more important than an extra half hour of sleep. And that's kind of a backwards thought process. I really need to protect my sleep and my sleep time. And so step one is give yourself enough time to sleep. Have a good bedtime and have a good fixed wake up time. A good bed regimen. It's hard though for, I feel like for parents, hey, telling their teenager it's time for you to go to bed. Are there other things that they can do or the teenager can do to help them get to sleep at a normal time? The discipline is first and foremost, but one of the things that's good is to create a nice wind down routine. We all have one, yeah. you know, where we either go read a book or do something relaxing. What we need to teach our teenagers is some of the things that they think are relaxing are actually counterintuitive to sleep. So for instance, Instagram or Snapchat, all those screen-based things talking to their friends that they do to relax and unwind, that's a light source that actually delays their sleep onset. So we should help them find something else relaxing to do before they go to bed, like read one of those old-fashioned paper things. Oh, one instead. of those yeah. things. <laughs> one of those things, yeah. A book, yeah, I think it's yeah, called? Yeah, a book, yeah. So uh, how many minutes or hours should someone put the phone away to start that process to go to sleep? So it's kind of like sundown. When the sun starts going down, that's a signal to our brain that it's nighttime. And so when the sun starts going down, we should avoid those kind of light sources to let our brain know it actually is nighttime. And that's very, even for me, I'm, I, I read articles on my phone before bed. It's, it's something really hard to do, I feel like. You no, know, there's this interesting study of a small number of people that gave them an iPad or a book to read before they went to bed. Okay. And the people that read the book actually fell asleep faster than the people that were reading the iPad. So reading is good, but it's the light source of the, the e-reader, so to speak, that okay. can be a problem. Get rid of those phones, put them aside, put the tablets down. So if people just can't find the solution, if they can't, if they still struggle, they're not getting that adequate eight to 10 for those teenagers, what should parents do? What can these kids do? So it, ultimately, if you think you've done everything that you can and you're still struggling with it, there are medical resources. I mean, come see a doctor. There are things that we can do to help. Um, but other things that are very helpful, are avoiding a big meal right before you go to bed. And so as a parent, you might be a little bit in control of that. You know, really the two hours before bedtime, there shouldn't be any big okay. meals, big greasy food items. If they're hungry, have something a little bit more nutritious like fruit. Late night snack is more fruit. Yep. Healthy options. Yeah, and cereal, a little bowl of cereal. Those are healthier choices. Not the sugar yeah. kind. Yeah. <laughs> no honey nut Cheerios or Reese Puffs. No, you're, you're, okay. your grandmother's cereal. We're talking old brand. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Dr. Uh, Andrew Steam again, Sleep Special with Alina Health. We have all of his tips on our website, care11.com. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Happy Saturday and happy sleeping to you. Amen. All right. <laughs>